And somebody shout, Amen. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I can't hear the people of God. I said, Good morning. And I pray that this day will be the day of a better dawn for you in Jesus' name. Somebody there is ready for a multiplied blessing. Multiplied miracle. An anointing of the Lord will break every yoke in every life in Jesus' name. Are you there? Or are you? Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment. And we thank you because we know you have opened the windows of heaven already. I'm asking, oh Lord, you pour your blessings upon your people in Jesus' name. All tears are wiped away. All sorrow is gone. And all the oppression of the devil is taken away in Jesus' name. Joy in every heart. Miracle for everyone. Deliverance and release for everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, today your people will move another step forward in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you turn every life around. And all the kind of sorrow and despondency, despair, everything will come to an end. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Even those who don't know to receive, I pray that you see bring the rain upon them in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout, Amen. We're coming to Galatians chapter 3. You'll see on the program today, we're talking about no curse for new creatures. New creatures are the people that have come out of the old life. And they come to the Savior. They turn away from sin. They turn away from darkness. They turn away from evil. And they turn to the Lord who is good all the time. And he brings grace into their lives. He brings his goodness to their lives. And he bring, brings heaven here on earth to their heart, to their lives, to their soul, to their spirit. And because of that, all of the old things are passed away. And all things become new. They are called new creatures. And now the curse is something of the past. And because it's something of the past, they are translated out of that curse, out of that darkness, out of the evil of the past, and they come into something new. No more curse, but blessing. Somebody answer, Amen. Amen. And he tells us in Galatians chapter 3, reading from verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, Cause edge is everyone that hangeth on a tree. I'll come back to that verse later. Come to Galatians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God our Father. I, I need to explain things to you because many people do not understand the idea of a curse. And it shifts everything on curse. If somebody, for example, walks all the day and they walk into the night and he's so tired and weary and weak. And then he's sleeping at a late hour. If he doesn't sleep well, if he's having nightmares, if he's having a kind of headache or whatever, he says, maybe I have a curse. No, that's not a curse. That's a consequence. There's a difference between a curse and a consequence. There is consequence for everything we do. You do something good, there's a consequence. You do something bad, there's a consequence. You don't eat well, there's a consequence. You eat too much, there's a consequence. You drink water, 
you drink fruits, there's consequence, and you're drinking alcohol, there's consequence. And you move about to any woman and you get in touch with any woman, there's a cause. And you stay, there's a consequence. You stay with only one woman, there's a consequence. And so, many people, they put everything into cause, cause, cause. But no, it's not everything that is cause, consequence, or cause. Christ came to deliver you. I said Christ came to deliver you. He said, who gave himself for our sins. That means then, all the sins we have committed, all those sins, they have consequences. And it cleanses us from sin, and it cancels the punishment of sin. He gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from the present evil world. It's not everything that he causes in the present world. There are some other things too in the present world that are evil. There's a Satan in the world. And there are things he does. And there are demons in the world. There are things they do. And there are sinners, evil people that just do wicked things to you that's not a cause, but they are evil and what they do can affect you but Christ has come to redeem us from the present evil world, thank God I'm redeemed I say thank God I'm redeemed and it says according to the will of God our Father come to chapter 2 in chapter 2 it tells us in verse 20 it says, I am crucified with Christ. What he's saying is that the real me, the I of the past, the personality of the past, with all the evil things I've done in the, in the past, everything is hanging on the cross because I am crucified with him. I just read to you from chapter 3 and that caused the seed that hangeth on the tree. And it says, everything I've done is hanging on the tree. And I come out of that cross because I'm now risen together with Christ. And all the consequences of the past, and all the causes of the past, and all those evil things of the past, they're hanging there on the cross, and I'm away from the cross. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. If Christ is there, a curse cannot be there. I said, if Christ is in there, a cause will not be in there. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We're coming to chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. It's not just that he's going to, he's done it already. He has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. And then it says, be made a curse for us. That is, every curse that will ever bear, all that has been put on Christ. I said I was going to explain to you. Number one, there is the curse of the Lord that came from the almighty God himself. Because it said, curses in the ground because of you. And you're caused because of this and caused because of that because of the broken law. We broke the law of God. Therefore, there's a curse coming from God. And not only that, there are Balaam's in the world. There is a Balaam that is hired to come and curse the children of God going on their way to the promised land. There's another curse that comes as a result of what we ourselves, what we have done. And what does that mean? It means, you know, in our family, in our home, it may be that the child, boy or girl, is doing something abominable, outrageous. And the father saw that, and the father was so provoked that Jacob was provoked against Reuben. Because Reuben had gone into his father's wife. Obviously not his own mother. And when the father was going to die, the father said, look at him, Reuben, my firstborn, the excellency of my power. Look at what he has done. And he placed a curse on him. And now all the curse coming from God because of the broken law. All the curse coming from Balaam, some Balak hiring them. All the curse coming from the family, an extended family. It says, 
Christ bore every sin for you. I'm talking to somebody there today. He bore, he bore every sin for you on the cross of Calvary. Then it says, because cousin is everyone that hangs on a tree. It's your sufficiency. It's your substitute. And it's the one that has borne every sin for you. Look at what follows now. There's a replacement. After that curse, then something comes. Look at verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Father. The promise of the Spirit through faith. Instead of a curse, now there's a blessing upon your life. I said there's a blessing upon your life. Look at verse 26. In verse 26 it says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized, immersed into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. It's saying that the blessing that comes from Calvary comes to everyone, male or female, Greek or Jew, Gentile or Jews, whatever and whoever we are, the blessing has come. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Heirs, you inherit according to the promise in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent a son made of a woman under the law, so that all that you have got through that law, everything Christ has cancelled. And if you are just coming and you have not gone into that blessing yet this morning, it will happen in Jesus' name. And it says to redeem them, to redeem them. The word redeem, that means to bring them out. That means to rescue them. That means to release them. That means to set them free. To redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying tell me abba father wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if his son then an heir of god through christ that means now because you have come into the kingdom and you are a son a child of god nothing coming from the paths of darkness or catch your life anymore in Jesus' name. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. In chapter 5, verse 1, stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. It says, stand fast. Know your right. Know who you are. I know what you possess. I know what Christ has accomplished for you on the cross of Calvary. And say, this is mine. Blessing is mine. Curse is not mine. Stand fast. Therefore, if you know the truth, stand fast. Therefore, if you have accepted the truth, stand fast. Therefore, don't go about reading junks, reading this and reading this and reading that. And those things are giving you false ideas about who you are. And they're not telling you who you ought to be. Look up here for a moment. What I see in the Christendom in general. Somebody has become a Christian for 10 years, for 20 years, and for 30 years. And all these books they are writing, they are the ABC of knowledge. All the things they are writing, it's like they're still in the primary school of Christianity. And somebody who has been 20 years in the Lord, 30 years in the Lord, is still reading the ABC, reading the ABC. And then we come to the retreat, and uh, you know, you are there, you've been 40 years in the faith, and you're expecting the ABC, ABC. We must stand fast in our right. You must know what you have. You must know that at this stage now, with who you are now, a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, this is not mine. That is not mine. This is mine. And you stand in the liberty where, where Christ has set you free. Thank God somebody there is free. And be not entangled again. 
and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, you will not be bound. Look at verse 24 of that same chapter 5. And that and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lost thereof. You see, there are some things that people attribute to a curse. For example, it's been smoking. And because it's been smoking, the lungs are affected. It goes for medical tests and the test says that this is wrong and this is wrong. He said, yes, that's what they said. I'm going for deliverance. No, it's not deliverance. You need repentance. And he says, I'm under a cause. No, it's not a cause. It's cigarette. And when you drop the cigarette and then you repent and then the blood of Jesus washes you, it will wash all your lungs and everything will become all right. And from today, you'll be all right in Jesus' name. I look at this, it says, if we belong to Christ, we've crucified the flesh. And the works of the flesh were crucified. And if you belong to any kind of association before, occultic association, that's part of the works of the flesh. You come out and you're forgiven and set free. And total freedom comes to you today in Jesus' name. It says, if we live in the spirit... Let us also walk in the spirit. I want to announce to you that those who are living in the spirit and walking in the spirit, causes don't catch up with them. I say causes don't catch up with them. It's only when you deviate, when you divert, and then you go to them, and you go to their society, and you go in the midst of them, they say, he has come. It's a newcomer. He has come. It's a newcomer on the broad way that leads to hell. And then they pounce on you, and they torture you, but you come out and live and walk in the spirit. And every curse is broken and taken away in Jesus' name. I thought the church would say, good, good, Amen. In Galatians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, but God forbid that I should glory, save except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. It says anything coming from the world, the curse and uh, whatever it is and the sickness and disease and you know generational whatever and uh, territorial whatever everything coming from the world i am crucified to the world and the world is crucified unto me for in christ jesus neither uh, neither a uh, circumcision availeth anything no circumcision but a new creature any new creature there today I said any new creature there today, and you say as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them, and mercy, peace and mercy, peace and mercy. For somebody there today, peace and mercy. I said peace and mercy. Cause is gone in Jesus' name. And it says upon the Israel of God upon the Israel of God. And you remember what Balaam said about the Israel of God? He said, I cannot curse them because they are blessed. And we are the Israel of God today, and Balaam cannot curse you. I said, Balaam cannot curse you because we are the Israel of God. God in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, I'm reading to you here in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, and I'm reading to you from verse 4. It says, Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee. The Israel of God, they hired against you, Balaam, the son of Baal, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to cause you. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hack in unto Balaam. Will not hack in unto Balaam. Will not hack in unto Balaam. If you are the Israel of God, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, if you are a son, you are a daughter in the kingdom, how do you think that God is going to listen to an occultic man with something in his mouth and then he's putting a curse upon you? God forbid it will not happen. 
And the Lord, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee. The Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee. Because, because, I said because, I said because, the Lord thy God loveth thee. God loves his children. I said God loves his children. Those things will not come upon your life. We are coming to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 18. Remember ye not the former things. I'm sure you've forgotten the former things now. Causes of the past. Assets of the past. All the plans of the devil in the past. And all the utterances and pronouncements of occultic people in the past. All that somebody said, and he said, you will not cross that bar. You will not cross that line. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, somebody there, the Lord is talking to you. Behold, the Lord is catching your attention today. He says, if you can just look up and behold, he said, everything of the past will vanish away. He said, behold, if you can behold Calvary, all the causes will vanish away. He says, behold, if you can behold the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith, everything that is negative of the past, everything will vanish away. He says, behold, I will do a new thing, a new thing for a new creature. Now it shall spring forth. And shall ye not know it? Thank God you know it already. I will even make, I will even make, I will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers will flow in your desert. Did somebody say amen today? Rivers will flow in your desert in Jesus' name. No curse for new creatures. I'm a new creature. I said I'm a new creature. No curse for me. I said no curse for me, no curse for my family, no curse on my business, no curse on my ministry, because I'm a new creature, no curse for new creatures. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the revelation. We need revelation. We need revelation. There are many people that do not have revelation. They carry the Bible. They don't have revelation. They hear messages. They don't hear revelation. They have a quiet time and they're reading the Bible every morning. They don't have revelation. They do not understand who they are in Christ. They do not understand where they are in Christ. They do not understand what they have in Christ. They do not understand how to possess what Christ has, has purchased for them. The revelation. Point number two, the redemption the redemption there is revelation there is redemption and then point number three the release after one two three this morning thank god a release is coming to your heart a release is coming to your life the release number one the revelation of consequences for nominal christians the revelation of consequences for nominal Christians. You know, it, my concern sometimes for people, they are coming to a church like this, they have heard about sanctification, they have heard about redemption, they have heard about the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives, they have heard about teach and receive power, and then he says after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and that power I give unto you, it says you'll tread on serpents and scorpions. And then they have a little problem. And instead of speaking to the mountain, they transmit or they translate that mountain to be a curse. And then people tell them, you know, this kind of a curse, this kind of problem is only in one place it can be solved. And he says where, and he points to him where. And then he goes there, and he goes to join nominal Christians that do not have assurance of salvation. And they line them up, and they pray the same prayer for them. 
Look at the nominal Christian, the consequences of sin upon his life, and they're not telling him. And he says, it's a curse, it's a curse, it's a curse. And look at a person who says, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, is lining up with those nominal Christians, and they're praying the same prayer. And they say, devil, come out, demon, come out, out of somebody who says, he's born again. There are consequences of the life that nominal, nominal Christians live. And those consequences, they don't need to take that anywhere. All they need to do is to go to the foot of the cross. And the foot of the cross is where they are. And kneel down there and repent and turn away from their sin. And then when their sins are forgiven, all the consequences of sin will be cancelled in their lives. You will not be roaming about anymore. I said you'll not be roaming about anymore. Number one, the revelation of consequences for nominal Christians. Point number two, the redemption from curses for new creatures. The redemption from curses for new creatures. Point number three, the release of all converts under the new covenant. The release of all converts under the new covenant we're coming to proverbs chapter 26 as we talk about the revelation the revelation of consequences for nominal christians nominal christians those are church goers church goers they don't have christ in them the only christians in name nominal nominal and there are consequences in their lives. Look at Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. It says, As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. The curse, causeless, shall not come. The curse, causeless, shall not come. Did I hear Amen? What does that mean? The curse comes less. Let's say you are even a nominal Christian. Let's say you are not born again. And you live your life. You are not perfect. You are not even righteous. You are a sinner. But you are a sinner by yourself. You are not hurting anybody. You are not fighting anybody. But you are a sinner by yourself. And you live normal life. Wake up go to work, go to school, come back. You don't fight with anybody. And you don't steal anybody's car. You don't steal anybody's lunch. You don't have any quarrel with anybody that they'll go and, you know, to darkness and then put something on you because there's no curse. There's no curse. You're just a normal, regular, daily sinner. But to sin against God, and God has sent Jesus Christ to die for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You have not even lived in your village. You just live in the city here. And it's a civilized, uh, you know, open place that we're living here. And then as you live your life like that, there's no curse. There's nothing. Yes, I know there are problems in your life, but those are consequences of your sin. It's not a curse. Now, you're a believer, and you are you're a bad person before, and you have been to the cross, and on the cross, Jesus showed his love to you, and that love, everlasting love. Thank God, that everlasting love is upon you right there. Am I talking to somebody there? And then he wipes all the seas away. He takes all the seas away. Because behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And the curse he will used to have as a sinner. He took that away. And now you go from that place and you are living as a new creature. What is the curse? You are living your life. What is the curse? You are reading your Bible. What is the curse? You believe that Jesus Christ is your savior, is the redeemer. What is the cross? And then you are open to get to heaven. When temptation comes, you say, God, look at temptation. This one is beyond me. Help me. And God will always help you. He will always make a way to escape. What is the cause for a curse to come upon your life? It says, the curse, causeless, shall not come. It shall not come. 
it shall not come. If Satan opens his mouth, if the demons open their mouth and they put a curse, whatever. There's no curse. There's no connection between you and them. The curse causeless will not come in Jesus' name. And if anybody goes out of, out of his way, you're a child of God. And because you're living right, because you'll not do this, you'll not do that, he gets angry. Because you're righteous, because you're redeemed, and because you're holy, he gets angry. He's angry at the commandment of God that you're keeping. And then he tries to put something on you. That thing will not hold any water. That sea will not come upon you. Because the curse, costless, shall not come. Do you understand? Say I do. Now, look at this. Somebody says, Pastor, I hear what you say. But you know, somebody said this to me. And the scene is taking effect. He said, I will not get married. He said, ah. I said, you should marry me. And you say, you will not marry me. Okay, I will see when you will marry in your life. That means, and the person says, Pastor, they put a curse on me. And said, I will not marry. First of all, the curse, causeless, church tell me, shall not come. Hold on, look up here. If I come to you as a preacher of the word of God and I say, God wants to make you holy. If you don't accept, the holiness will not come. I say, God wants to purge you and purify you and the blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. And you say, I'm not ready for that. I don't want holiness now. I'm looking for another thing now. The holiness will not just jump on you. Even though I said it, you must accept it before it will happen. Come back. A good man tells you that this will happen. Something good, something wonderful. You don't believe it. You don't accept it. That good thing will not happen. A bad man comes to tell you and he says, come on here. I so and so, I put a curse on you. If you don't accept it, it will not be yours. If you don't believe it, it will not be yours. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah came to Ezekiah. And he said, Ezekiah, he says, yes, I'm hearing you. You have something for me? Yes. Set your house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. Ezekiah said, I don't accept that. Somebody there said, I don't accept that. I am Isaiah. I'm a prophet. And I tell you, your time has come. Set your heart in order. You must die. Ezekiah said, please leave me. You can go. I'll talk to God about it. I don't believe that this year is the end of my life. I don't accept. If you don't accept, it will not come. It will not happen. And then Ezekiel went to God and said, God, I'm hearing something. It's an information that I'm not ready for. I don't want to die now. I have this project. I have this plan. I have this proposal. I still want to accomplish this. Lord, I'm not ready. And God said, that's all right. That's all right. And God is telling you this morning, that's all right. I said, God is telling you this morning, that's all right. If you don't accept the cause, it will not happen. If you're not afraid of the cause, it will not happen. If you're looking at Calvary, Calvary is greater than them all. If you're looking at Christ, Christ is greater than them all. If you're looking at the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is greater than them all. I cannot accept Calvary and accept a curse at the same time. I cannot accept Christ and accept curse at the same time. I cannot accept what the blood of Jesus has provided and accept the curse at the same time. You cannot accept light and darkness at the same time. If you accept the light, the darkness will vanish away. I said the darkness will vanish away. For a curse, causeless, shall not come. Did somebody say, Amen? 
The word of God tells us in Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 21. Psalm 119, verse 21. It says, Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do hear from thy commandments. It says, The curse is for those who are proud, and the air and they go astray from thy commandments. It's a consequence. That's the consequence of disobeying the law. And as you disobey, that cause comes, but you run to Calvary and say, Lord, I was foolish. I was sinful. I backslid. And this is happening now. Lord, forgive me. And forgiveness comes. Freedom comes. You are set free in Jesus' name. Because if the consequence on nominal Christians, those who say they are Christians and they steal everywhere, they do all these things everywhere, and then they say there's a cause, there's a cause. No, it's not a cause, it's really a consequence of an evil life that you are living. Zechariah chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 3. Zechariah chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 3. In Zechariah chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse, look at that, This is the curse that goeth forth out over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side, according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on, as on that side according to it and it shall it will bring it forth says the lord of hosts and it shall enter into the house of the thief you see these are phenomenal christians the curse comes to them and the judgment comes to them because there is a law of sowing and reaping it says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And all these nominal Christians, they sow uh, a lot of bad, bad seeds. And the seed is germinating, and the seed is growing. And all these consequences are upon them, and they are referred to as a curse. And it says, it will be in the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of the house, and shall consume each of the timber thereof, and the stones thereof is a consequence of an evil sin. And I pray all those consequences as you repent, as you turn to the Lord, the Lord will forgive, and they will not come to you anymore in Jesus' name. After that forgiveness, you need to, you know, shape up your life and live right and, and go the right direction. Because we're told in John chapter 5, John chapter 5, reading from verse 14, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Tell me what follows. I said, Tell me what follows. That's how I catch those who are not reading their Bible. Those who are not looking at the Bible. John chapter 5. What verse am I looking for? Okay, open it now because I'm still going to ask you. So I can catch you if you are not opening your Bible. It says afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple. And he said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Tell me what follows. See no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. He had been sick, he had been impotent, incapacitated, he had had a terrible problem for 38 years. And now the Lord had healed him, and the Lord said, sin no more, lest a worse sin come on thee. The implication, the explanation is that if he went back to sin, and somebody, something worse than 38 years of sickness came on him, He'll be saying, it's a curse, it's a curse. They have not let me alone. They're still after me. They have put a curse on me already. And I got healed. And then I'm going for deliverance again. No, that's not it. It's because you went back to sin. But if you will keep yourself in the grace of God, and God will keep you. I say God will keep you. If there is no sin, then all those sins will not come again over your life. And you will be free, completely free in Jesus' name. We're looking at, we're looking at Jeremiah chapter 5. 
and verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 5, tell me your verse. 25, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. That's the consequence. The consequence of a bad life. The consequence of a sinful life. The consequence of a wretched life that is sinning against the Lord all the time. But as you come to Christ and you bring all that to Christ, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. We're coming to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 7. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Be not deceived. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, as a child of God, that's why you need to live a righteous life. You need to live a holy life. A righteous life brings peace. A righteous life brings blessing. A righteous life brings the provision of God and the promises of God to fulfillment. But it says, don't deceive yourself. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, that's why many of the people were read about in the Old Testament. That's why they suffered. That's why they suffered because of what they sowed. Uh, look at, for example, David. David was a great man of God. But you see what David did? He saw somebody else's wife. And whatever condition he saw the wife, that, that's not the problem. But now he went for that woman. But you know, the Bible has said, the word of God said, when you become a king in Israel, you will read the law of God. You will read everything. In fact, you'll copy everything. There was no preaching at that time. You'll copy everything and write everything that you may fear the Lord and obey the Lord. And then he killed the husband of that woman and married that woman. And calamities came upon him. In chapter 12, the judgment came. People say curse, curse, judgment, judgment is consequence. And in chapter 13, one of the sons defiled one of the daughters. And in that same chapter 13, one of them, Absalom, killed the other one. And in chapter 14, you know the problem. Chapter 15, you know the problem. You know why? Consequence, because whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Look at verse 8. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Life everlasting. Life everlasting. I pray that will be your Lord in Jesus' name. Number one, revelation. Now you understand. The cause causeless shall not come. And all those consequences can bring the consequences to Calvary. And Calvary today will wipe everything away in Jesus' name. And then after that, go see no more, lest the worst thing come on thee. Point number two is redemption. Redemption. Redemption from the curses for new creatures. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 13. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's why Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Look up here for a moment. If you understand the people that are talking about curses, and the people that preach about curse, curse, curse all the time, if this is happening, that's a curse. If you are not studying your books as a student, and then you are not making good grade, that's a curse. And if you are married, and there is, you know, something wrong somewhere, you are always, you know, fighting at the time the woman ought to get pregnant. And therefore, that time you turn your back on each other, and your temper is so hot, and your wife is being driven away from you because of your temper, and because you are not meeting at the right time together, there is no child. They say there is a curse. And if this is happening, you take your something to the market, and you don't have the quality and 
and the attitude and the smile and the dressing and the disposition of a good salesman, saleswoman, and your market is uh, kind of uh, down and your appearance is down. And when people even buy something from you, they don't enjoy what they buy and therefore they don't come to you. They say there is a curse. They do not tell you that it's because of your appearance, it's because of your language. If you have the ministry, if you have a church, and then you come to the church every time, you're always, you know, the people who are not there, you're angry they are not there. And you're talking to the people who are there, you, you cannot reach the people who are not there, you're always angry, always angry. A mistake here, you're angry. A deliberate something here, you're angry. And people are running away from your church, they say, say curse. If you, you know, many, many things, they say are curses. They are not telling us the right thing. You see, even if you had a curse before, you come to Christ. Once you get to Christ, that curse must stop at that point. I said that thing must stop at that point. But you know what Jesus does? He doesn't only stop the curse. He stops the bad character. He stops all the bad things you are doing, all the bad things you are saying, so that you are now a new creature. You're a new creature, and all the old things are passed away, and thank God you are now totally free. I say thank God you are now totally free. And it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is reaching. Because said is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham. What kind of blessing are you going to have today? I say what kind of blessing are you waiting for? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. As you believe the Lord today, total redemption has come in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1. Redemption. Redemption. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, made us feet, made us suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He makes us feet. To have the inheritance of the saints in the light. He makes us fit to have the inheritance of saints in the light. Have the inheritance. What do you have? I say, what do you possess? What are you partakers of? I can't hear God's people. Inheritance of saints in the light. Look up here for a moment. You want to pour some, you've got some good water. And you want to pour the good water into this bucket. And in that bucket, you have dirty water. A lot of bacteria inside. A lot of poison inside. And the bucket is there. That's the only bucket you have. And you want to pour the good water into that bucket. But the bucket is having that dirty water. What do you do first? I say, what do you do first? You pour away the dirty water. What do you do to the bucket? You wash the bucket and then you pour the good water inside. Do you think we're more intelligent than God? He looks at your life like the bucket. And he sees consequence, curse, calamity, evil things there. And he wants to pour into you to make you a partaker. Of the inheritance of the saints in the light. And you see that your bucket, your life is dirty. It's poisonous. It has a lot of spiritual bacteria. What's he going to do? He'll pour away the causes first. Consequence first. All the calamities first. He will clean your life. Make you a new creature. And then he'll pour that thing, good thing, into your life. And it will be good seen without any mixture, with any bad seen. How is it? You have blessing, you have a cause. No, cannot be. You have blessing, you have blessing. He has a cause, he has a cause. He comes to Christ, all the causes are taken away. And then look at verse 5. 
verse 13, who has delivered us. What has he done? Who has delivered us? I said, what has he done? From the power of darkness. That's it. It's the power of darkness that has some authority to put any curse on anybody. But it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Thank God you are translated. I said thank God you are translated. You know what that means? Look up here. You see, from country to country, laws are different. From country to country, the people that have authority, they're different. Let's say, for example, here you are in our country. And there are people that are after you. And they are connected with the powers that be. And then you say, what am I going to do? I go here, they're after me. I go here, they're after me. And so, an idea came to you. You got a passport. A passport to Europe. You're not going through a Mediterranean Sea. You're not going through any kind of road that will make you drown. And then you say, okay, we couldn't get him here in the country. We got him in the Mediterranean Sea. You will not die in the Mediterranean in Jesus' name. You get a passport. And then you get to the airport. And then you are translated to the other side. The policeman here in the country does not have authority in that other country. The army here in our country does not have authority here in that other country because you are translated. What I'm telling you is you were under the authority of the paths of darkness before. And now you came to Christ and you are, trans you are first of all transformed from a sinner to a sage. And as a sage, you are washed in the blood of Jesus. Your name is in the book of life in heaven. And you are translated, translated, translated to the kingdom of his dear son. Whatever they do here under the power of darkness will never get to you again. When you get out there, try and take a stone and throw it to heaven. Will you reach the sky? That's where you are now. Because your life is hid with Christ in God. And now you are over there and somebody here is throwing a stone. Is throwing a stone. You are looking at him. And you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. That stone will not get to you. That curse will not get to you. That evil sin will not get to you. You are free. Did you get the revelation? I said, are you getting the revelation? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us. I'm going to make it personal. He has translated you out of the power of darkness. And he has translated you to the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have. What do we have? In whom we have. I said, what do we have? Are we going to have it in the future? When do we have it? We have it already. In whom we have redemption. Through the blood. Through the blood. Even his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Look at chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 14. It tells us in verse 14, Ephesians chapter 2, it says, But when, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, tell me the verse. In verse 14, it says, For he is our peace. There is peace in your soul. There's peace in your life. Christ, your Redeemer, has given you the peace. You're not worried anymore because there are a consequence there. He is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Know what that is saying? 
the Jews were here, the Gentiles were there. And the Jews had special benefits, special blessing, and special provision. And the Gentiles almost had next to nothing. But now he has broken down the middle wall of partition. Every blessing that was flowing to Israel is now flowing to the Gentile, is now flowing to you. Having abolished, look at that, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof. That means all the things that worked against your life, they are slain, they are destroyed, they are cancelled. Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, make it personal again, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against me, which was contrary to me. And he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in each. He did that for you. I said he did that for you. Now, you are released. Say, I am released. Point number three, the release of all converts under the new covenant. The release of all converts, if you are converted, if you are a child of God, if you are giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are released already. Say, I am released already. Look at Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bond men. You will not be a slave again. I have broken the bands of your yoke and I've made you to go upright. Yokes are broken. Fetters are destroyed. Curses are removed. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Reading here from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 4. For thou hast broken the yoke of his body and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Broken. Your yokes are broken. How? Look at verse 6. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a child, a son is given. The government shall be upon a shoulder. And his name shall be called, tell me, Wonderful. Tell me the next one. Counselor. Tell me the next one. Mighty God. Tell me the next. The everlasting Father. And finally, the Prince of Peace. Look up here. If the government of your life is on the shoulder of him that is wonderful. The government of your life is on him that is the counselor. The government of your life is on him that is the mighty God, on the everlasting Father. The government of your life is on the Prince of Peace, obviously. What is happening to all the people outside that kingdom, outside that government? will not happen to you in Jesus' name. Haven't you seen two different countries? One country here, 
the next country over there. They have a system of government here. They have a system of government on the other side, on that or in that other country. And this government here, their health care is not very good. You have sickness, you have cancer, you have this, you have that. And they don't have the things to treat those people. And then a neighboring country, very next to this other country, they have good health care. And the government over there, they have health plan and all that. They have all the hospitals. They have even free services for those who are sick. And they're taking care of the elderly people. You see, even though the countries are near together, because of the different governments, what is happening here will not happen over there. What I'm saying is, you have now come into a new kingdom. You have come into under a new government. And it says, a child is born. The son is given. And the government of your life will be upon his shoulder. And whatever is happening to other people, even in neighbor, even somebody is very close, that, you know, something is happening to him. How can that happen to you? You are under another government. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom. It says to order each and to establish each with judgment, with justice, and with justice from henceforth, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He goes thing is going to perform in your life. Restoration. Recovery. Redemption. Rescue. As you come, the Lord is going to roll all the problems away in Jesus' name. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I read from verse 21. Are you ready? Joel chapter 2 verse 21. I said, are you ready? Fear not. I will not fear again. Fear not. I will not fear again. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do for the Lord will do great things. Your time has come. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth a fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then. Somebody there, be glad then. Somebody there said, be glad then. Ye children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God. You see your God? You see your Father? Are you born again? Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Yeah. Jobs are coming. Yeah. Employment coming. Yeah. Prosperity coming. Yeah. Health has come. Yeah. Deliverance has come. Yeah. Dominion has come. Yeah. Abundance has come. Yeah. Miracle children for the barren. Wives for those who have been watching. Husbands for those who have been watching. Progress has come. Success has come. The old is gone. A new scene is starting right now. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25. You read this one for yourself. Verse 25. One, two, three, go. Amen. Read it after me. And I will restore to you. 
and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat. And ye shall eat. And I will eat in plenty and be satisfied. Satisfaction has come. Sufficiency has come. And praise the name of my God. Are you quiet? I will praise the name of my God. That has dealt wondrously with me. And me. And I. As one of his people. Shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. Curse gone. Sickness gone. Infirmity gone. Yokes broken. Blessings are flowing down into your life right now. Your cup will be filled. And your cup will overflow. I'm waiting for you. I said your cup will overflow. What are you there? Where are you there? Lift your hand to the Lord. Stand right up there and say, Lord, the time has come. My time has come. My time has come. My cup will overflow. My cup will overflow. Of course, it will overflow. Blessing. Blessing. Inheritance from heaven is coming upon your life. The Lord loves you. And the Lord has provided for you. Accept it. Believe it. Receive it. It is yours. There's a revelation. Accept that revelation for you. Accept that revelation for yourself. No more curse. No more curse. Come to Calvary. Come to Calvary. Come to Calvary. Jesus paid the price. He paid the penalty. It's cancelled the curse. It's cancelled the curse. Don't mention your mouth anymore. Don't mention your mouth anymore. I have a curse. No, you don't have a curse. And if it's a consequence, you can get rid of the consequence at Calvary. You're free. Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Stand fast. Stand firm. You're not under a curse. Stand firm. Reject that negative thing. Don't believe that negative thing. Abandon that thought. Curse, curse, curse. Cancel it. Forget it. Nullify it from your life. It's coming in the secret recesses of your mind. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Cancel that maybe. Let there be no shadow of doubt in your heart. Understand how free you are. Free and free indeed. Free. Free. Free indeed. The curse of God cannot come upon his own children. And the curse of Balaam cannot come upon the Israel of God. And the curse of ignorant people throwing stones at heaven will not reach heaven. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Free are you today. And free are you for life. It makes you free. It sets you free. It keeps you free. The same power that broke the yoke is able to keep the yoke broken. The same power that sets you free is able to keep you free. The same power that removed the curse released you from the curse. It's able to keep the curse away from you forever. Sins are forgiven.
sicknesses are healed evil powers are destroyed because Christ has set you free and he keeps you free he sets you free and he keeps you free remain in Christ abide in Christ and the freedom abides with you and the curse costless shall not come let Calvary solve all your problems believe the Lord believe his promises those promises can never fail And you have the inheritance of the saints in light. Pour out the dirty water out of that bucket. Wash that bucket. Cleanse that bucket. Let the blood of Jesus wash you whiter than snow. And let him fill you with overflowing blessings. You know, every promise you believe is going to be performed. Every promise you believe is going to be performed. And if you don't believe that curse, it will not happen. You don't accept that curse, it will not happen. They bring a letter to you and you don't accept it, you don't receive it. They'll take it back. Believe the light and you cannot believe darkness. Believe heaven. And you cannot believe hell at the same time. Believe the prophet. You cannot hold on to the program, to the problem anymore. Accept his truth. And you cannot hold on to error anymore. The truth comes to you and you accept the truth and the truth will set you free. 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 I'm free indeed. Look at do like Hezekiah. I don't accept that negative prophecy. It will not happen. I don't accept that sickness. It will not stay. I don't accept that dream. It will not hold. I don't accept that pronouncement but the one that is trying to place a curse, it will not happen. The truth you believe, the truth sets you free. And the truth you keep on believing, the truth keeps you free in Jesus name we pray yeah. and somebody shout amen yeah. all the causes are broken
All the yokes are broken. Calvary has stopped every cause coming into your life. And the past causes, Calvary has taken everything away. Somebody there, I am free. What is she there? I say, what is she there? Now you are free to succeed. Now you are free to enjoy your blessing. Now you are free to be married. Now you are free to go back to work. Now you are free to be victorious. Now you are free to be happy and joyful. Now you are free to have a good life. The past is gone. The new thing has begun. And that new thing will continue ever in your life in Jesus name. Are you still there? Heaven is looking for you. Where are you there? I said, where are you there? Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your children. Thank you for every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl. Lord, we pray. Calvary will stop every curse in every life. In Jesus' name. Sickness, whatever the name. Infirmity, whatever the name. Disease, whatever foundation, whatever source is coming from. Be healed in Jesus' name. Powers of darkness, you are destroyed. Out of the life of every brother. Out of the life of every sister. Be removed in Jesus' name. Mountain of problem. Mountain of barrenness. Mountain of curse. Mountain of yoke. Every mountain, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, let the revelation become yes and amen in every life this morning. Let the redemption become real in every life this morning. And let that release come to everyone right now. You are released. You are released. You are set free. Nothing bites you anymore. Nothing holds you down anymore. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your freedom. Go higher. Go higher. Move faster. Get closer to your success. And let heaven smile upon your life from now on till the new year. In Jesus' name. Your dawn of new beginning has now come. You are not looking back. You are looking forward. Congratulations. You are not down. You are up. Congratulations. You are not defeated anymore. You are now successful. Praise the Lord. Heaven I shower this blessings upon you. Every good thing you lost in the past restored in Jesus name. And as you go about today, every step you take, restoration. Every step you take, renewal. Every step you take, satisfaction. Every step you take, sufficiency. Lord, put testimony in every mouth. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.